people were given certain instructions on how to live here on earth, they believed that our people come from the stars and that we were lowered down here. And that's actually what our word for Anishinaabe, what it means, being lowered down. I remember years ago as a child, I used to hear the old people tell me stories about the stars. A long time ago, there was two young ladies that were playing on the moon. And they were having fun playing around in the dirt. And one of them found this bone, a really sharp bone. And of course, she quickly put that bone in her hair. And she was, of course, decorating herself with that bone. And the other sister wanted it. So they started to argue back and forth over that bone. Well, the one sister with the bone threw her other sister off the moon, like right off. And she came twirling down to the earth and she landed in, in a big lake. When she landed in that water, her medicine bag opened up that she had on her side. And all the medicines from her medicine bag went to the bottom of the lake. And so she dove down to that lake to find her medicines. But she couldn't find them because it was dark. And it was also very scary down there. And she looked around, she tried to feel them, but she couldn't find them. But something was watching her from a distance. And it was a big old bear. That bear watched her fall off the moon. Watched her land into the water and watched her, her medicines get scattered all over the bottom of that lake. So that bear swam out there and asked her, Hey, you should come up here. Jump on my back. I'll take you to the shoreline. It's going to be okay. She's like, no, all my medicines are here. I don't want to go up there. I've got to find all my medicines. Of course, that bear said, I know a lot about medicines. I know every root and shrub in this whole land. I'll show you everything. Just come on up. There's, there's serpents down there. They're going to eat you. So, of course, she swam up. And she got on that bear's back. And that bear took her to shore. And they made a wigwam. They made a lodge. And that's where they lived. And she agreed to have that bear teach her about the medicines of this world. And that bear taught her all of the roots and shrubs, all of the plants, what they're used for, how they're used medicinally to cure things. And year after year, she started to fill up her medicine bag again. But something happened when this was going on. She started to fall in love with that bear. But that bear told her, no, I don't think I want to be married to you. I don't think that would work. But she was growing into a, a very strong woman. And she knew what she wanted. She wanted that old bear. She was persistent. She'd be picking medicines. I want to marry you. That bear would say, um, no. And then they'd be picking a flower. We're going to get married. Um, the bear would say, no. Then they'd be digging for roots. Married, me and you, um, the bear would say no. This went on for a lot of years. And every time she looked at that, that ugly old bear, just hearts would go into her eyes. She just loved him. So finally that bear broke down and said, okay, I'll marry you. Because you're the only one that wants to marry me. So I guess we'll get married. And of course, they had a beautiful relationship. And it was soon after when her stomach had started to get a little bit big. She was going to have a baby. And you could hear things moving in her stomach. And she gave birth to a beautiful little girl. And that girl's name was Winona. Well, they raised her up really good. They raised her to know all of the laws of this land. They raised her to know every root and shrub. They put her out to fast when she was of age, and they prepared her for womanhood. And they told her, one day you're going to go off and get married, but whatever you do, don't marry the west wind. So what does she do? She marries the west wind. They didn't want her to marry the west wind, because the west wind would just come in, swoop into her life, charm her, and then leave. And it wasn't a very, the West Wind was not a very good husband. 
but that's who she loved. And before long, her stomach started to get big. And you could hear thunder inside of her stomach. She was going to have a baby. And so when it was time for her to give birth, her parents were there. And she says, okay, I'm going to have a baby. So she held on to this tree. And back in those days, they, they gave birth standing up. So she held on to that tree. And all of a sudden, out came the baby. And right away, Winona's mom grabbed her grandchild and noticed that it was a rabbit. It wasn't a human baby. And quickly she put a bowl over top of it so that it wouldn't get away. Then Winona said, I'm going to have another baby. All of a sudden, this another baby came, but it was half human and half rabbit. And it just took off running into the bush. They couldn't catch it. Oh, the grandmother was very upset about that. Then all of a sudden, she says, I'm going to have another baby. Sure enough, another baby came plopping out. But it was a human baby. This baby took off running. They couldn't find it. Finally, she says, I'm going to have one more baby. She's, she has going to have four of them. She sat there and she says, this one hurts. And all of a sudden, plop, something heavy hit the ground. It was a great big black stone. And it killed the mom. She died giving birth. She died giving birth to that big black stone. And that stone, it just started to roll like this. It started to roll into the forest by itself. The only baby that was left in the camp was the one that the grandmother had put the bowl over top of. The grandmother was so sad that her daughter died. She was so hurt by it. They buried her daughter. They tried to take care of that little baby. When they lifted that bowl up, it was a frog. They put the bowl back on it and they lifted it up. It was a plant. Then it was a squirrel. Then it was a muskrat. This baby could change into any sort of animal or anything it wanted to. It could shapeshift. And of course, they named that baby Nanabuju. And that's the birth of Nanabuju and how Nanabuju came to this world. Nanabuju comes from the Shpingmuk, from the power of the West. And it goes through four powers to get here. And it came through the power, through Winona. It came through the power of Winona. It entered into this world. So of course the grandparents were left to raise Nanabuju. So they told Nanabuju, whatever you do, stay away from the water. There's serpents in there and they're going to want to eat you. They don't like you. They're jealous of your power. So what does Nanabush do? Starts playing around the water. And it didn't take Nanabuju long before he waged war on the serpents just for fun. And the serpents got really mad. And they tried to kill him. But they couldn't kill him. He was too gifted. He was too strong and too fast. So what they did was they sent an assassin to try to kill him. And this assassin was a great big bullfrog. They told that frog, that old lady, they said, we're going to give you special poison medicine. You put that on your tongue and you sneak up to Nanabuju. And when he comes up to, to your face, I want you to throw your tongue at him and lick him. And if you can lick him, that poison will kill him. So of course that frog agreed to, to do that. Of course that frog agreed to do that. And that frog got that poison on its tongue from the serpents. And it went off to go kill Nanabuju. This was a bad war that was happening. Nanabuju was sitting in the forest and all of a sudden that frog came up. Nanabuju said, stop. Don't get any closer. You might be an assassin. You might try to kill me. 
That frog said, no, I'm not an assassin. I can hardly hear you. I'm a frog. I don't have good ears. Nanabuju says, you're probably an assassin. That frog said, I'm not. Come a little bit closer. I have a hard time hearing you. Nanabuju got a little bit closer. That frog said, I'm not anything. I just, I just want to see you. Come here. I have something to tell you. So Nanabuju went up really close to that frog. All of a sudden, that, that big bullfrog's mouth opened up. And a great big tongue just untwirled out of its big mouth. And it started going right for Nanabuju's face. That tongue was just coming straight for him. And he just moved just in time. And that great big dangerous tongue just missed his face. Of course, Nanabuju at that time grabbed an arrow and just threw it at that frog and killed that frog. So that frog laid there dying. Nanabuju said to it, I, I, I thought there was something about you that I didn't trust. I had a feeling that you were an assassin. And of course, the frog died. So Nanabuju thought, you know what? I'm going to enter into that frog's body. And Nanabuju opened up that frog's mouth and jumped in and became that frog. And then that frog, of course, jumped it back into the lake and started to swim down to where those serpents were. Nanabuju got down to where those serpents were. Of course, they thought it was the frog, but really it was Nanabuju and the frog's body. And Nanabuju told those snakes, I killed Nanabuju. I killed him. That poison worked. All oh, those serpents were so happy. They were dancing around, singing, Nanabuju is dead, we killed Nanabuju. And of course, they're slithering around, doing what snakes do. And Nanabuju just started to lick them with that frog's tongue and started to kill them one by one. They all started to die. Everything was going terribly wrong. It took them quite a while before they realized that something was really wrong. And Nanabuju finally licked the last one and said, Look at how many of you I killed. You still can't kill me. I'm more powerful than you. And Nanabuju swam to the top of that lake. He turned into human form and he ran off into the forest singing his victory song. Those serpents were so mad at him. So they thought there's no way to kill him physically. So we're going to use our, our powers. We're going to use our, our curses. And we're going to curse this whole world. And we're going to make a big flood happen. And we're going to drown them. So that's what they did. They used all their powers and they caused a great big flood. And that water just started to get high. It started to build up. So Nanabuja didn't know what to do. He climbed one of the highest mountains. And the water was still coming up. He was going to drown for sure. So he, he climbed up on this tree, and as soon as that water got up to his waist, he started to sing a song. And that tree grew a whole bunch. His songs were magic. Then the water got up to his waist again, he'd sing again, and that tree would just grow. This happened several times. Finally, Nanabuju knew that the power of those songs couldn't last forever. So he sang it one more time. The song told him, I'm only good for one more time. After that, our power is not good enough. Nanabuju sang that song loud and that tree grew. And that water went right up to his bottom lip and it stopped. The serpents thought for sure that Nanabuju was drowned. So they stopped flooding the earth. But of course, Nanabuju had a lot to think about. Nanabuju looked around and seen all the animals floating on logs. So Nanabuju jumped on a log, and he started to ask the animals, I need help. We can create this world again quickly. All I need is some dirt from the bottom. It's too far for me to go down. Plus, if I go down there, they're going to kill me. So, of course, different animals tried to dive down to get dirt. Nanabuju said, all I need is a handful of dirt. 
With that dirt, I can create a whole world again. I can create all the land again. So all the animals tried to dive down to get a handful of dirt. None of them could do it because it was too far down. Finally, it was Muskrat. Muskrat said, I'll try. The Muskrat dove down and was gone for a long time. They thought for sure Muskrat would never make it back up. But then they seen these bubbles come up. And Muskrat floated to the top. And of course Muskrat died. But in its hand was a handful of dirt. So Nana Buju quickly took that dirt and blew it like this. <coughs> and that dirt just went all over the place. And it started to create the land that we know it. So Nana Buju asked all those animals, help me create everything again. Help me create the rivers and the mountains and the rocks. And so all the animals, Nana Buju went to go do that. And they made a beautiful world again. But there was one animal that was pouting. It was Turtle. Turtle was at the bottom of the lake. Turtle was just pouting there. So Nana Buju said, hey Turtle, how come you're acting strange? How come you're not uh, being a team player? And the turtle said, because you never asked me to help. Nana Buju said, I, I asked everybody to help. Well, you didn't specifically ask me. Well, I'm busy here. I, I just made a general call for help. So turtle said, well, I'm just going to stay here. So Nana Buju thought about it. Turtle's been such a great person. I don't want turtle to be left out. I have an idea, he thought. So he said, Turtle, come up to the, the water. Come up to the water's edge. I have a job for you. So Turtle rose up out of the water. Nana Buju grabbed his, his bow and arrow and he shot at Turtle. Not to kill Turtle, just to startle it. That arrow hit that shell and it bounced off. And when that Turtle got startled, its tail flicked up into the sky like that. And all the mud from that turtle's tail splattered across the sky. And Nana Buju said, Thank you so much. Look what you created. Turtle looked up and couldn't believe it. All that mud got splattered across the sky and it created what we know as the Milky Way. Remember the old medicine bag that got dropped in the lake so many years before when that lady was thrown off the moon and all her, her medicines got scattered on the bottom of the lake. Turtle was down there and digging itself around in the mud. It didn't realize it was collecting all that medicine on its tail. And when it got startled, it flipped it back into the sky, creating the Milky Way. And it told Turtle, you just created Jibai Mika in the path of souls. You just created the road to Ishpingmuk. You've just created the, the road that goes to the spirit world. You did a great job. Thank you, Turtle. And that's our origin story for the Milky Way.